A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After the crippled man had been cured, while Peter and John were still speaking to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple guard, and the Sadducees confronted them, disturbed that they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They laid hands on Peter and John and put them in custody until the next day, since it was already evening. But many of those who heard the word came to believe, and the number of men grew to about 5,000. On the next day, their leaders, elders, and scribes were assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and all who were of the highly priestly class. They brought them into their presence and questioned them. By what power or what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, answered them. Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name this man stands before you healed, he is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his mercy endures forever. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. O Lord, grant salvation. O Lord, grant prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. and be glad in it. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. John. 
Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathanael from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, no. So he said to them, cast the net over the right side of the boat and you will find something. So they cast it and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from the shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire and a fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore, full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. These post-resurrectional accounts are probably among the most beautiful found in all of the Gospels, and particularly John and his accounts, and all these minute details that are there as well. Obviously, inspired by the Holy Spirit, the evangelist John had a reason or purpose why he was giving all these very minute details. Obviously, there's greater and deeper meaning there as well. Simon Peter, the beloved disciple, the unnamed disciple, probably John, of course, eyewitness. Peter, not recognizing Jesus immediately, but the beloved disciple, he was the one who always recognized our Lord first. And of course, Simon Peter then follows suit and following. Try dragging a net of fish over to the charcoal fire. Peter almost becomes like a Superman here as well. Obviously, some symbolic action is there as well. Peter is to be the leader of the church. The net is not torn or broken. It's filled with 153 fish. Why such an odd number? Well, we know 2,000 years ago that Greek zoology had identified that there were only 153 known species of fish in the world. So those fish represent, of course, all species. And of course, those fish represent the church. Peter, the fisherman, the leader of that church. And that church is to be indeed Catholic. In other words, universal, made up of all peoples, of all races and all tongues. But I think what's so beautiful about these encounters is that word itself. It is an encounter with the risen Lord. It's almost like they had to start all over again. 
during Jesus' three years of his public ministry, they certainly encountered Jesus, but we probably wouldn't call it that. They were just with Jesus, kind of took him for granted, I suppose, while he led them along the way. But then, of course, came that horrific Good Friday when everything was dashed to pieces, or at least so it seemed. And now it's like we're starting over again, but now it really is an encounter. It's an encounter with the risen Lord, a very personal encounter, which the evangelists in all four Gospels make sure that we know that, and it's a very personal encounter whether it be Thomas touching the nail marks of Jesus one week after his resurrection, or Mary Magdalene who throws herself at the feet of Jesus at first thinking he was the gardener. All these beautiful personal encounters. And what's Jesus doing? He's feeding them symbolically with the Eucharist, bread and fish on that charcoal fire. And it's that Eucharist that sustains us and invites us to enter Jesus into that encounter more and more because we too are to have that personal encounter with our Lord. So as we celebrate the glory of these eight days of Easter Day and then of course the week of weeks, these seven weeks of Easter, it's a good time for us once again to continue our encounter with the risen Lord. Let us allow ourselves in our own prayer life, in our contemplation, our meditations, to touch the nail marks and to proclaim Jesus as my Lord and my God, as Thomas did. May we too be filled with the life of the Spirit that Jesus breathed on them on that first night of the resurrection, the Holy Spirit. So let us allow that relationship with Jesus to grow. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our intercessions are found on page 13. Let us pray to God the Father who gave us new life through the risen Christ. Lord our God, your mighty works have revealed your eternal plan. You created the earth, and you are faithful in every generation. Hear us, Father of mercy. Purify our hearts with your truth. Guide them in the way of holiness, so that we may do what is pleasing in your sight. Let your face shine upon us, that we may be freed from sin and filled with your plenty. You gave the apostles the peace of Christ. Grant peace to your people and to the whole world. We pray for all our beloved dead, and especially in this Mass, we remember the repose of the souls of Marion and Harlan Gums, the priest of our diocese who died on this day, Father Adelbert Rhinelander, and Father Aloysius Gitter. Let us pray to the Lord. Give us the glory of your Son. Lord God, we thank you for the gift of life, eternal life, in the resurrected presence of Jesus. Help us to encounter him more and more each day of our lives as we grow closer in trusting you in your great love and mercy for us. We ask all this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. 